Inner Quest explores various pathways through which you can connect with the infinite wisdom of the universe and apply it to personal, professional, and spiritual growth. This program featuring accomplished practitioners, educators, and authors is provided by Infinity Foundation, an innovative center for holistic studies and research. We invite you to share this journey with us. Hello, welcome to InterQuest. My name is Jay Stone, your host for today, and our guest is Dr. Ryan Winslow. Welcome, Dr. Winslow. Thanks for having me. Let me tell the audience a little bit about you. Uh, Dr. Winslow is a chiropractor who specializes in permanent correction of the spine. Dr. Winslow graduated from uh, Palmer College of Chiropractic with research honors for a project that examined improper seated posture and how to correct it. He recently founded Straight Up Spine and Posture in Gurney. Uh, Dr. Winslow, is there, a, do you prefer Dr. Winslow or something else? Uh, Dr. Ryan is great. Dr. Ryan, okay. Dr. Ryan, what are some things chiropractors do? Well, it's a pretty diverse profession and a lot of us practice very different ways. So um, the general concept is we work with the musculoskeletal system, we work with the spine and how that uh, interacts with the nervous system, which obviously is inside of the spine. So um, spinal misalignments then can put pressure on the nervous system and we seek to correct those misalignments. Okay. Now you mentioned before the show that your uncle is a chiropractor. Yes. Do, do you, you know, and he graduated uh, 30 years ago. Uh -huh. uh, how is his educating, training, and practice differ from yours? Well, uh, there's a lot more prerequisites now. Um, I graduated from Loyola University of Chicago. Hey, uh, go Ramblers. I'm, I'm also <laughs> oh, on this too. Yeah. Excellent. So I graduated with a Bachelor in Science, mm -hmm. uh, which is essentially a pre-med. Um, so we have a, a four-year undergraduate degree, and then um, it's, it's four years of chiropractic college as well. So we have an equal number of course hours as uh, physical therapists, medical doctors. And I'm sure there's a lot of a practice, practicum or residency involved. Yeah, so um, there's uh, a whole year of clinical uh, where you work basically with patients, um, a lot of case reports and things like that. Um, and then we uh, usually associate more of a trade uh, than a residency like medical doctors have. Okay. Uh, what is special about your chiropractic approach? Well, um, like you said, my uncle's a chiropractor. So I grew up um, seeing the kind of patients that he worked with, um, and they're essentially all pain patients, um, people like that. So that's what I specialize in. Um, is getting people out of pain and bringing them into wellness and promoting wellness, a healthy lifestyle, getting people fit. Uh, the way that I go about doing that um, is a holistic approach. So I look at the muscular system, uh, the spine, uh, and then my, one of my main focuses is posture, which I think is really important and has been overlooked in the past. Yeah, we're going to get into that uh, a little bit later. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, also before the show, you said this is the most common question you get. What is the difference between physical therapists and chiropractors? Yes, so that's a really common question that we get. A lot of our patients are seeking um, our care, again, to get out of pain and get well again. Um, and so that's what they would go to a physical therapist for. However, our education, uh, the whole of it mainly focuses on the spine, uh, back pain, things like that. A little bit of neurology, where physical therapists have a very broad education that includes things like uh, post-surgical rehabilitation, which we generally do not do, um, neurological issues like um, stroke, things like that, where there's a very long recovery process, things mm -hmm. like that, which we also don't really deal with do, too much. Do sometimes you refer patients to, to physical therapy? Absolutely. Um, things like knees, ankles, shoulders, um, we definitely work with, but if it's a more advanced condition, we prefer to really refer out to either a surgeon or a physical therapy, although we usually refer to physical therapists first. Okay. All right. And so somebody comes to you with chronic pain. Uh, well, what types of chronic pain do, do you uh, see? Well, the top three for sure are um, neck pain, back pain, and headaches, which are, are th three things that we're, we're very effective at. Um, so that's kind of our bread and butter. Um, and then beyond that, um, one of the things that uh, I have a passion for is scoliosis. Okay. Um, so we work with that and um, then general posture correction as well. And so what are uh, some of the common causes of uh, neck pain, back pain, and headaches? Well, um, certainly uh, work is a big one. 
Um, so heavy manual labor obviously can cause that. A lot of trauma like sports or car accidents. And then um, extended sitting for long periods of time over years or decades uh, can be a kind of chronic reoccurring. Yeah, I've, I've heard that having a job that requires you to sit 40 hours a week is like smoking a pack of cigarettes yeah. a day. They say sitting is the new smoking, for sure. Yeah, and I, I recently bought uh, one of these desks that allow you to stand, adjustable desks mm -hmm. that allows you to stand up while you're at the computer. Are, are you a fan of those? Or Yes, yeah, especially the convertible ones where you can go from sitting to standing. Yeah, that's what I have. Yes, and I think that's great. Uh, we work with, uh, occasionally do ergonomic consultations for corporations. Obviously, they're concerned about cost, and one of the great things about modern desk design is those are reaching a price parity where a convertible sitting standing desk is about the same cost as a traditional standing desk, so I think that'll become more popular. Oh, good, good. And uh, uh, when I bought my standing desk, uh, it, they, they suggested you get like a mat to stand on. Yeah. Uh, anything about that? Well, uh, there's a typical symptoms that people get when they switch because they're not really used to it. Um, so foot pain, or, you know, sore feet from standing a long time is a big one. Okay. And uh, a lot of people don't know that you don't have to stand all day at the desk. Um, they've done a lot of research studies, and they find that people use it two to four hours out of a general eight-hour workday. Okay. So just having the option to stand up for a small period of time can make a big difference. I, I once saw a physician who's a, a little too enthusiastic. He actually had like a treadmill <laughs> in front of the computer. He'd be typing in his notes. Yeah. Uh, all right, and why is it possible to treat chronic pain without drugs or surgery? Well, that's a big one. Uh, when you have surgery, uh, which is uh, definitely needed in some cases, but you can't go back. So unless you have a very traumatic in, uh, uh, accident, we, we try to avoid that. Have, have you seen uh, patients where they really needed surgery? Uh, yes, and we've seen the converse where they had surgery that seems unnecessary, and now they're in for a lifetime of unresolvable pain. Yeah, and, and does it show up on an x-ray? Is it visible to the eye? Can you feel it with your hands? Well, one of the things that we look at is the alignment of the spine, and we use radiographs or x-rays to determine that. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to move the spine back to uh, an optimal position. Um, so some of the things that we see with surgery is that they're surgically fused mm -hmm. into something that's less than optimal. Yeah, getting back to uh, the headaches, uh, uh, could there, well, could there be a problem in the neck or the low back that would cause a headache? Yeah, um, a lot of headaches are caused by muscular issues, mm -hmm. um, either directly muscle tension headaches, which are very frequent, or migraines, uh, which tend to start at the base of the neck. There's um, a group of nerves that comes out and that gives the aura, the eye pain, nausea, all things like that. Um, so a lot of times when people have forward head carriage or mm -hmm. poor head positioning, that causes those muscles to be chronically tight all the time. And so is that part of why you focus on posture? Yes. Okay, so, so the neck and the head uh, would be part of the posture correction that you do? Yeah. To, to give a comparison, uh, one of the uh, treatments that you use for migraines nowadays is they use Botox, uh, mm -hmm. which temporarily paralyzes the muscle, and they'll put that into those uh, muscles at the base of the neck to paralyze them, and that will make headaches go away. Uh, conversely, we can, you know, bring the head back to a more neutral position and that will let those muscles you relax naturally. You kind of smiled when you said that. It's like you think that's kind of foolish. Well, it's, it's pretty intense to paralyze the muscle to get rid of that. Although yeah. I understand migraines uh, are, are very serious for some people and is a major problem in their life. I, I hear some people, they get totally incapacitated for mm -hmm. a day or two uh, at the height of the migraine. Yeah, so I can absolutely empathize with that. Uh, a lot of people simply aren't aware that we work with that type of thing. And what about sleeping, you know, the importance of having a good bed, a good pillow, uh, and then you hear about people grinding their teeth at night mm -hmm. often leads to headaches and neck and back pain. Can you say a few words about that? Yeah, we get, that's a very frequent question, great question. Uh, people always ask about, you know, what's the best sleeping position, questions about pillows and mattresses. Those are the big three. And um, what, do you, what, what do you answer? Uh, well, if your mattress is more than 10 years old, it's probably time for a new one. Yeah. Uh, so that's a basic piece of advice that we give out. I, I recently bought an organic mattress, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, it, it's made a difference. Yeah. Yeah, a new mattress can definitely be great. And there's a lot of ones that are coming onto the market nowadays that are um, um, cheaper um, and are, are made of kind of stacked different types of foam a little bit of memory foam, a little bit of a more squishy latex foam. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the combination of those different types of foams is more supportive. 
Mm -hmm. um, so those are a good option. And then as far as pillow goes, we always encourage people to use as few pillows as possible. Um, I've, we've met some patients that sleep with three pillows under their head, and that's going to flex the spine and push the head forward all night. Wow. And, and uh, do they have difficulty going down from three pillows to one pillow? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, a, a few of those cases, they've been doing that for years or decades. Um, so it's, it's a habitual thing, but then also their body has kind of gotten used to that position. So it takes a lot of effort to stretch that spine back to its normal to make that comfortable. And then what about treating men and women? Uh, do you treat them the same or do you see some problems in men, more in men than women and some problems more in women than men? Yes. Well, one of the things that uh, females uh, have a, a, a much greater um, predisposition to have is scoliosis, about a three to one ratio. Um, so we do Is see, there a reason for that? Well, um, no one's sure. I haven't read any um, studies that are conclusive one way or the other, but they think it's because women generally have more flexibility mm -hmm. um, and less muscular. Um, so they have less support to kind of hold the spine in there. It is, is scoliosis, is that something someone develops uh, as they age or, 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 or people born more born with scoliosis? Well, there's a large genetic predisposition for it. Okay. That's for certain. They actually have genetic tests for that. Okay. Um, so that's a big one. Uh, but usually it develops in childhood as a small imbalance that kind of grows out of control. Um, or you develop it, they call it a de novo scoliosis that you develop uh, when you're older, uh, usually due to a uh, decrease in bone density. All right. Um, well, I'm really excited to, to hear what you say about correcting posture. So I don't want to waste, I'm not, I don't, I'm not wasting time, but I'd really like for you to talk about uh, posture. Sure. So where do you want to begin? Well, posture is a kind of a, an unknown epidemic, uh, poor posture. Mm -hmm. um, and humans are a very interesting uh, example of posture. We're the only, you know, people or the only animals that walk on two legs. So we have kind of unique stresses on our spine. Uh, so like we were talking about earlier with sitting, that's, I think that's a major driver of poor posture in, in our age. Um, and of course, text neck is too, you know, looking down at your device all the time. There's such a thing as text neck. <laughs> yes, we've uh, certainly the younger generation, um, not that I'm that old, but uh, uh, the 15 and under, uh, we're seeing some very poor alignments in the necks. Uh, when we look at their necks on x-ray, uh, we think that's because they're growing up with cell phone. One of the questions that I ask patients when they come in uh, for an exam is I'll ask their parents when they got a cell phone, and some of the answers that we hear nowadays are four, five, and six. Yeah. That's just very young. Well, and what concerns me is that the, the, the spine, and, and they're still developing. Right, and they grow into that shape, which makes it much harder to rehabilitate. Whew. So what, what do you, t if the par any parents are watching or listening, what are you going to say some to those parents? <laughs> well, w the way that I look at it is if, you're only, if your posture is only deteriorating from poor habits, you have two options. You can either, one, stop doing those things, which is very difficult with teenagers and cell phones, yeah. Or two, do something to reverse it, which is what we advocate. Um, because like I said, a lot of people will simply not stop using computers or cell phones. It's just a fact of life. So you have to have some sort of routine or uh, treatment that you can do, preferably at home, uh, to kind of undo uh, the poor posture that those things create. And so okay. that's what we'll talk about in a bit is how we do that. Yeah. Do you ever uh, recommend uh, exercises? Yes, uh, so we use a combination um, of exercises, corrective exercises like neck retraction or extension, uh, which are ranges of motion that become lost with age. It, is it possible for you to demonstrate for our audience? Sure. Um, let me see, I'll line up with this camera. So one of the things that we look at, uh, the most common postural distortion that we see is forward head carriage, where the head goes forward. Mm -hmm. um, so a very simple exercise is called head retraction, where we keep the chin flush or straight, and mm -hmm. then the head just goes straight back. So we make double chins. It looks a little bit goofy. Our patients are reluctant to do it, <laughs> but uh, we call those a, a posture break, where every hour, two hours, people will simply do 10, 12 repetitions of that, and that can be very relieving for and a lot of And if somebody was working on a computer, would you definitely have them do that? Yes. Uh, we, first thing that we do is try to correct the, their monitor setup, which is a big one. That's what we did our research on is the placement of the monitor. T t t t hey, you're a great source of information. Tell our audience about 
the proper placement of the monitor? Well, we'll start with the worst one. Okay. That's using a laptop on your lap. Okay. Um, so your neck is both forward, it's flexed, and your mid-back is also flexed. Yeah. So you get three uh, bad positions. Okay. Um, what, what about these iPads uh, that people use in, yeah, or tablets, I should say? I again, when you're holding it down here, um, you're consistently flexing the neck, and then it's going forward as well, so that you know, causes chronic uh, tightness of the, of the muscles at the back of the neck. So, okay. so we encourage people to have their monitors about eye level. It's okay. a good place to start. Um, and because that way uh, your head doesn't have to look down too much. You're looking straight ahead. And then um, it's also a kind of a mid-level on the eyes. So it doesn't cause too much eye strain. A a excellent. All right. So I did those few chin flexes, I think you said it was? Head retraction. Head retraction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually, I felt good from that. Mm -hmm. Anything else you can recommend? You said there was another exercise. Well, so depending on what we see, a lot yeah. of people need retraction and then on top of that we'll do extension which is a, a range of motion that a lot of people simply don't do if we're looking down all day a lot of people never look up so we mm. try to just bring that range of motion back into their body restore some movement common sense common sense yeah ba balancing and what are anything from side to side well one of the interesting exercises that we work with uh, we look at a few ranges of motion that are, are not commonly evaluated and mm. so one of the ones that I frequently see um, is what we call a translation, where the head is simply moved one way or the other. So to give you an example, this would be a head tilt, mm -hmm. uh, which we see usually slightly, and then a translation would be where we go the opposite. one side to the other side. Okay. And so those would be some simple exercises that we would do to, to rehabilitate that posture. It's just simple side-to-side -side movements, and those are extremely difficult for some people. Um, you look very flexible and healthy. <laughs> um, do you get uh, chiropractic treatments yourself? Yes, so I, I like to get treated at, at least every other week, and then um, some of the rehab equipment that we'll talk about in a minute, I use um, three or four times a week still. Okay, and assume you're using your uncle? <laughs> yes, so yeah. I like to go see my uncle. Uh, There's a few friends that I graduated with that are in the area that I like to go see, uh, and of course the doctor that I used to work with was great as well. Okay, uh, do you want to show our audience uh, how we use these devices? Sure, so uh, the technique that we use um, it is a specialty technique. It's a postgraduate technique. So um, I have an advanced certification, which is more than 400 hours of training in this. And so these are the simplest th tools that we use. It's called a denaral, and uh, there's one for the neck, uh, for the mid-back, and for the low back. Mm -hmm. So one of the most common things that we see, I'll use the spine model here, is that the spine should have three curves. It should have one in the neck, one in the mid-back, and one in the low back. So when those curves are lost, and the spine generally becomes straight or occasionally even reversed, that puts uh, strain on the nervous system, mm -hmm. and then the muscles are always trying to get that spine back into alignment, which they can't really do. So it needs a little bit of outside help. And what could the strain on a nervous system do to a person? Well, they've done a lot of studies. Um, so if you have uh, a, a flattened neck, a straight neck, a military neck, or a reverse neck, like we see after whiplash, that can pull the spinal cord taut, and pull uh, the nerves even down into the low back, it can pull it tight, which can press it against disc herniation. So even sometimes low back pain can be caused by a large forward head carriage or a reversal of the cervical curve. Could it cause damage to the organs? Yeah, long term, that's a big one that uh, is ongoing research, and that's the, the base of the chiropractic philosophy is that we improve whole body health by relieving that tension on the nervous system. Now, when you go back to the... Uh, have an adjustment every couple of weeks. Are they finding something out of balance with you? So, well, there's a few different ways to view how to adjust. It's kind of, it's an art form. Some people are watercolor painters, some people are oil painters. Um, so what I look like, what look for and what I like to get adjusted by uh, is looking at range of motion. So we look okay. to have symmetrical movements. If you can rotate very far one way, not so much the other way, we try to adjust to increase that range of motion, and then we use rehab tools like these denerals to kind of hold it in that position so it lasts a long time. Okay, so you're going to show, before I interrupted you, how, to, how you would use your, those, your tools. Yes, yeah, so let's look at an example of the neck. The neck should have a curve where the neck it has a curve that points forward and is, mm -hmm. is, more, is, is open in the back. Okay. So what we see a lot of times is that this neck becomes flat um, or reversed, and it simply needs to push some curve in from the back. So I'll take these two away, and we'll just look at the neck denaral. It's very simple. What we do is we have the person lay 
over this, and this puts a curve back into the neck. And w would, would they buy one of those and use it at home, or would they come, just come to your office for that? So we start people with this. It's the most gentle uh, way to increase the curvature of the neck, and then they can use it at home. We have specialty equipment in our office that's a little bit more aggressive that makes a change faster, uh, yeah. but you simply could not do at home. Yeah, and, and I'd like to caution the audience, you know, you hear on TV, you know, don't try this at home. Yeah. You've got four years of uh, chiropractic college and then the 400 additional hours. Mm -hmm. So go see, a, go see uh, Dr. Ryan yeah. if, before you start treating yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we have people lie on this, and one of the reasons that we like, we call this a passive way of stretching the spine. So mm -hmm. traditional stretching, if we were going to do those two examples that I gave you earlier with head retraction or extension, those involve the muscular system. So the muscular system is activated, mm -hmm. um, and those muscles um, are, are not relaxed. So what's nice about this simple stretching device is it stretches uh, the ligaments which connect bone to bone, mm -hmm. and that's basically what's holding the spine in that position. It puts a stretch on those while the muscles can relax. So not only is it easy, simple to use, uh, but it's very effective in, in, in affecting a permanent change to the spine, a measurable mm -hmm. change to the spine, and those things last. Okay. When you say measurable, uh, it might have been y y uh, the, your former partner, but they talk mm -hmm. about the percentage or curve. or Yes. Uh, and so you actually measure a person's spine? Yes. So the, the, basically, depending on your opinion, the spine is either created or evolved into, into a particular strong and stable configuration. Mm -hmm. And again, that's to have um, a curve at the top of the neck, okay. an opposite curve in the mid-back, and then again, a third opposite curve in the low back. So we should have three curves. Now, a curve is important because it's a very strong structure, just like an arch. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very strong, self-supporting structure. So when you lose that curve, uh, it puts stresses that in places of the spine that shouldn't really have those stresses. Uh, which leads to degeneration, which is a major one because that is irreversible. Um, and, and, and I'm sure discomfort and disease mm -hmm. <laughs> for the person. Do you want to do the mid-back one? Yeah, so it's, it's basically the same idea. Uh, so again, in, in the neck and the low back, we typically see that the spine becomes straight or reversed in some cases, mm -hmm. um, where in the mid-back, what we see is that the spine has too much curvature. And now this is something that happens to almost everyone as we age, so it's important to um, get on top of it as early as we can. Um, it can be d more difficult to do uh, mm -hmm. in older adults, um, and it's, again, very simple. We just put this at the peak of the curvature, and it flattens out that mid-back. And so that in and of itself will drive the head back. Uh, but a few other things happen when we have too much curvature in the mid-back. Uh, one of those is that it applies uh, physical stress to your lungs, to your mm -hmm. heart, the internal organs, um, so you can't take as large of a breath. Your heart might have pressure on it. So there's a few um, very simple reasons that you want to straighten that out. Um, and then it also puts you at a risk for, uh, risk for compression fractures, which are, um, uh, can be very debilitating in older adults as well. I, I could imagine. Or, 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 and you want to show the uh, bottom? Yep, so in the low back, again, it's a very similar idea. Um, the Is low it, isn't the low back where most people have their pain? I would say it's a 50-50 neck and low back. Um, so in this one, uh, it basically forces the spine to have some extension. Mm -hmm. um, and now you can think of uh, the most common uh, cause of back pain is, is a disc issue. Um, mm -hmm. So what it does is it opens up the, the spaces between the disc and it allows it to kind of suck the disc back in. So this is very helpful for a lot of people that have uh, a chronic back pain due to disc issues. Now, it's becoming uh, very popular, like knee replacement, hip replacement. I guess they do shoulders, too. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's important to see a chiropractor after having a knee, hip, shoulder replaced? Uh, it can be. There can be a lot of biomechanical causes for especially knee and hip and ankle pain uh, that can come from the spine. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, we also joke, you know, uh, has anyone ever heard of a spine transplant? Because we haven't. So yeah. it's important to take care of it because, you, um, you know, knees long-term, you can get them replaced. And a lot of the knee replacements nowadays are, are very helpful. Uh, yeah. it's, it's improved dramatically. So you see some patients coming in after knee replacement. Yes. And uh, so one of the things that we look at, and let's talk about a knee replacement or a hip replacement, um, is that the spine, um, they'll, they'll change the length of the leg. 
the anatomical, the absolute length of the leg will be shortened or sometimes lengthened. And what that'll do is it'll put a, to exaggerate, it'll put a tilt into the pelvis mm -hmm. um, and that can cause irritation in the low back. So there's a very simple process. We'll simply put a little block in one shoe and balance out the base of the spine, the pelvis. You do that in your office? Yes. Yeah, so we use a very particular um, x-ray to look at uh, the low back, uh, the very lowest part of the low back where the, the low back meets the pelvis. Um, and so it's a particular view, it's actually a surgical view called the Ferguson, mm -hmm. a modified Ferguson view. Um, and with that, we can not only see the low back, but the, the tops of the femur heads as well. And uh, one, the pad you put in, it's, I assume, measured precisely, and then you take an x-ray to make sure everything's precisely. Le leveled out. So if somebody's walking around at home, because we spent, you know, eight or more hours walking around our house, mm -hmm. well, you know, in addition to bed, but um, should somebody be using that like in a slipper? Well, it gets, it gets difficult to, if I, if I could grow people's legs, I'd be, I'd be a very popular chiropractor. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, the, the, the best workaround that we have is that, uh, the little block. So we recommend it's important if you're going to go on a long walk, exercise, if you're uh -huh. on your feet for work, those are the times that it's very okay, important. Okay, so not even, we're not walking out around the house would be a little excessive. Yeah, we would prefer 24-7, but it's just not feasible. All right. Um, Talk a little bit about the importance of lifestyle to our health. Well, lifestyle is, is the key to longevity. You know, proper nutrition, um, staying active and fit, um, flexibility, range of motion, those are some big ones. Yeah. Um, um, it, well, let's talk, could you talk a little bit about uh, proper nutrition? Because your definition of proper nutrition might be different than the person viewing this at home. Sure. So the things that, we, I have a very simple view on nutrition, you know, that should be, you, you should be cooking some of your food yourself, so you're aware of what goes into it. We have a lot of patients who, who simply don't cook, so all of their food comes from a restaurant or fast food, things like that. Processed food. Processed food. So we try to encourage people to uh, get on top of their own nutrition through cooking to understand what goes into the food. Um, and see the difference between that and either prepared food or processed food. Okay. Now, you mentioned a range of motion. Does mm -hmm. uh, that mean some stretching exercises? Absolutely. So one of the first things that I look for um, is range of motion um, of the legs when it comes to back pain or the neck and shoulders with neck pain. Um, and we give a simple stretching program that, you know, seeks to improve range of motion where it's been lost. Well, something like yoga? So I, I have mixed opinions on yoga. Okay. Um, it's Careful now, I've been doing yoga for 30 years. L I, longer than you've been alive. Yes. <laughs> I, and I love yoga, yeah. and, but with people with back injuries, um, some of those movements can, can, can exacerbate the injury. So uh, we just teach them to be aware of the movements that would be detrimental to them sure. and to just guide them to avoid it. Yeah. But a lot of people, when you're in a class, you can get so into yoga that they feel great at the time, and then afterwards they can be a little bit sore. Okay. So we just try to make sure that they're very cautious about that if they have an issue. Okay. And then you, uh, you continually test for range of motion, I assume, when your patients come in to make sure they're making progress. Well, we've got about 30 seconds. I'll leave, it, leave the floor to you. Well, again, we just want to stress that uh, posture is an important thing. Um, so you can be evaluated, so you can seek out chiropractors who specialize in posture evaluation to see how your posture is, and that would be the first step in getting it corrected or to getting a program to help you correct it yourself. Thank you. For more information about Dr. Ryan Winslow, Infinity Foundation requests talk show, stay tuned to the credits at the end. Until next time, wish you good health, good fortune, and good spirits. Dr. Ryan, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank Thanks you. for having me. For more information about this show, our guest, Infinity Foundation, or any of our other programs, please visit our website, infinityfoundation.org, or call us at 847-831-8828.